Okay, hello again. Um, I said I'd start today by just looking at question six from yesterday. I hope it didn't cause too many problems. The probability of B is 0 0.45, and that means that everything in that circle has to add up to 0 0.45. So that means that X is uh, 0 0.15. And um, the other thing we know is the probability of everything will always add up to 1. So I've got uh, 0 0.45 here, 0 0.35, that makes 0 0.8, and then 0 0.85. So that means that Y has to also be 0 0.15 for that to work. So I just want to use that question just to recap um, a little bit of the Venn diagram notation that we need to be familiar with. And, and you will remember, hopefully, that these two look very similar, but actually are very different. So we call this A intersection B. Just closing my window because of the noisy lorry. A intersection B. And that's that bit of the diagram. We call this A union B. And this is everything in A and B combined. You may remember this notation here means everything that is not in A. So that is everything there, including outside the circles. And so the probability of A intersection B, well, that's X, which we worked out previously was 0 0.15. A union B, well, the probability B was 0 0.45, so that added to 0 0.35 is 0 0.8. And the probability of A, well, remember, X is 0 0.15, so that adds up to a half. So the probability that you're not in A is also a half. Now, that wasn't part of the question, but I just want to clarify those three sorts of notation. And it's important you understand that A dash doesn't include that bit there. And the A intersection B does include this bit here. So let's move on to uh, something new today. So a little bit of theory first. I want you to imagine two events, A and B. And uh, I've got two different scenarios here in these two different Venn diagrams. So A might be um, it rains. B might be my favourite football team wins the match they're playing today. OK. This diagram here shows that A and B can both happen at the same time. This diagram shows two events which can't happen at the same time. So this might be A is my uh, team wins the game and B is my team loses the game. So two events that can't happen at the same time we say are mutually exclusive. And two events which can happen at the same time we say are not mutually exclusive. So let's say I want to know the probability of one thing or another thing happening. Not both, not both together. I don't really mind, either or. Well, if they're mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B happening is just those two probabilities added together. So the probability my team wins, I don't know, is 0 0.7. The probability they lose, 0 0.1. So the probability they win or lose, 0 0.8. And, and the rectangle would be the draw. Now, if they are not mutually exclusive. We've got this overlap here, haven't we? So if I just add together the probability of A, which is this probability here, and the probability of B, which is this probability here, I've counted this bit in the middle twice. So if you've got two events which are not mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B is the two probabilities added together minus the overlap. Now, if this is a question with a diagram, then you don't need to worry about this because it's obvious. You know, it's the probability of A or B is that plus that plus that. But in a question without a diagram, you've got to be mindful of the fact that the probability of one thing or another thing happening is not automatically those two probabilities added together. It is if they're mutually exclusive. But if there's an overlap, you've got to take that into account as well. Here are another two events. These events are not mutually exclusive because there is an overlap. 
But I'm now thinking about whether these events are independent or not independent. Two events are independent if one doesn't affect the other. So uh, it might be A is the probability that I get my homework done on time and B is the probability that uh, it rains today. OK, so those two events are not in any way related at all. But sometimes events do affect each other. So uh, B might be the probability that I'm late to school and A might be the probability that my bus is late picking me up. So those two events are clearly uh, related. If the bus is late, then it's going to increase my chance of being late to school. And the problem is that you can't tell, unlike mutually exclusive events, you can't tell from a Venn diagram whether events are independent or not independent. But there is a way you can check. And it's about the probability of the two things happening together. The probability of A and B, which is this overlap here. A intersection B, A and B. So the probability of A and B happening, if the events are independent, is the tumour for all of these multiplied together. And we've done that from a tree diagram, haven't we? We know that to work out the probability of this outcome, I multiply that probability by that probability. The probability of one thing and another thing happening, I multiply one by the other. If the events are not independent, then that does not equal um, probability of A times the probability of B. Um, now, what it does equal, we're going to come to in, in a subsequent lesson. But for now, we're going to use this fact to test if two events are independent or not. So here is an example of a question where we, in part B, are being asked to test if two events are independent. We've actually got three events in this diagram. Um, so firstly, um, we are asked to find the probability that a student chosen at random watches B or C or both. So that is that there. So I'm going to pause. You've got the numbers of students in there, so see if you can take that and turn that into a probability. OK, so we're 30 people, so all the probabilities are out of 30. And, and actually, because this is all part of my working, I haven't cancelled them down because I'm going to be combining them. Um, so a, B or C or both is the 4 and the 5 and the 10 and the 7, which makes 26. Quicker would have been to count the ones that aren't, uh, 1 and 3, and do 30 take away that. Uh, but anyway, 26 um, out of 30, and that obviously cancels down to 13 out of 15, and uh, you could write that as a decimal, but it's a horrible decimal, so it's best left as a fraction. Right, here's the key bit though. The probability of watching A and watching B, are they independent? Well, let's write down the rule that is true. It's only true if they are independent, and we're going to test to see if that works in this case. So this is only true if A and B are independent. If it's not true, then they're not equal. The probability of A and B is 4 out of 30. OK, 4 out of 30, 2 out of 15. Now, the probability of A, well, altogether, 7 people were in A. So that's 7 out of 30. And the probability of B, well, altogether, I've got 4 and 5. I've got 19 people were in B. So that's 19 out of 30. So here we go. I'm going to uh, get my calculator out and work out what 7 over 30 times 19 over 30 is. Drum roll, please. And we will test to see if we come out with 2 over 15. Here we go. We do not. And so because of that, we know that A and B are 
not independent. Okay, I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I'd say you're never going to get a question on mutually exclusive events in an exam because it's really easy. But if you didn't take notes from earlier in the video, page 77, question one, just gives you a, a good way of representing mutually exclusive events. That's hopefully straightforward. Um, you are very likely to get a question on independent events, and in particular, this skill about testing if two events are independent. So I've got four questions for you here, including a really tricky one, which um, I hope you're going to be willing to have a go at. I'm going to post a video solution to eight, um, probably later on on Friday, once you've all had a go at that. Um, but these are all testing this fact that I mentioned earlier, that if two events, A and B, are independent, if the result of one doesn't affect the result of another, then the probability of them both happening, A and B, which in a Venn diagram would be A intersection B, is equal to the probability of one multiplied by the probability of another. So if that sum works, they are independent. And if that sum doesn't work, they are not independent. Um, nothing to submit, but please get in touch if you are having any problems. And again, please let us know if you haven't got access to a textbook, because we can sort you out. Take care.